Heyo, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Glitch Building. Today I'm going to go over some simple spiral methods as well as a actual and true Fibonacci spiral. A couple of months ago I made a simple spiral tutorial and claimed that some of the spirals within that tutorial were Fibonacci sequences, which they in fact were not. So I'm going to quickly go over a bit of a revamped version of the simple spiral technique of mine, and then I'm going to go over exactly how you can get a actual and true Fibonacci sequence and have it represented in the form of a spiral. So let's get right into it. My simple spiral method is basically where you have a circle with a wire at its center point, and then you build out and away from that center point, either clockwise or counterclockwise, one snap point at a time, each iteration increasing your distance from your center point. So you increase your radius as you are moving around the circle. Doing so, you can grab yourself wire endpoints or build part scaffolding to build off of in, in an uncountable number of ways. Essentially, reverse wire glitch from one position away from your center point somewhere around the circumference of your circle, pulling back to the center. Then, green state the same floor part, one snap point to the right or to the left, then count out two spaces. Reverse wire glitch from the second one, pull to your center, move to another space to the right or the left, count out three, reverse wire, come to back to the center. You will develop a nice spiral if you maintain this trend. Now, depending on how many sides to your circle that you have will depend on how quickly it curves and spirals. If you are to use use a 16-sided circle with large floor parts and a 16-sided circle with small pavings and then create the same spiral using the same counting, using the same iterations and the same radius each time, you will have the exact same spiral. One will just be larger than the other because the build part that you use to create your circles and create your, your, your scaffolding from is directly correlated to the size of the spiral that you are making, not the gradient of the spiral or how quickly it spirals. How quickly it spirals is determined by how many points around the circumference of your main circle you have, how fast or slow you increase your distance from your radius as you are going around the circle. Now, if you've been practicing up on your wire manipulation, this next part won't be too difficult. With this setup, you can also create some very nice ascending or descending spirals in two different fashions. The first one is simply reverse wire glitching and pulling back to your center for your first iteration, then counting up either a short wall or a full wall or a raised paving, whatever part you're using, count up one on the next iteration, reverse wire, and pull to your previous one. Then on the next iteration, count up three, pull to your previous, then count up four, pull to your previous, and so on and so forth. This will get you a nice wire scaffolding that you can then manipulate in any fashion that you want or use for just simply snapping things into those positions. The other method that leaves you with perfectly level snap points all facing either directly in towards your center point or directly away from it is to, at each iteration around your circle that you are making your spiral around, you need to create a wire that is parallel to the iteration that you are pulling from. Then you need to build up from your center point and reverse wire back to a point at the top of your newest stack to create a level wire. This one is a little bit more time consuming, but if done correctly and done do the wire pulls in the right order, you can have everything around your spiral facing either directly away or directly towards your center point, and they are all perfectly level, so it is very easy to manipulate the wires from that position to any other orientation that you would like. Again, reverse wire glitch from the outside edge of the base of the row that you're doing, pull to your center point, then count up how high your next step is, then reverse wire from that, pull down at an angle to your center point, grabbing a parallel wire, then build up at your center point, reverse wire and pulling to the top of that stack that you built on the outside of your circle. You can also combine all of these techniques to have a spiral that is not only ascending away from a center point on the horizontal plane, but also increasing in its radius away from the center point laterally. To do this, you just build out the spiral in the same way I showed you in the steps earlier. Then you use the either the short walls or the raised pavings to build up your spiral one step at a time at each iteration. This can come up with some really cool looking things, but it is more difficult to line up things like stairs because the angles do not match up perfectly, but with a little finagling, you can make it happen, trust me. Now, to make an honest man out of myself, I'm going to show you how you can get a spiral that is a representation of a perfect Fibonacci sequence. As you can see here, I have a Fibonacci sequence laid out using the area of a small floor part as the base 
unit of one. What we're going to have to do here to follow a specific trend is create a series of circles at each one of these pillars and then build semicircles off of them. At A, make a 16-sided circle. At B, a 32-sided circle. At C, a 32-sided circle. At D, a 64-sided circle. And at E, another 64-sided circle. By rotating what portion of the circle we save as wires and increasing the number of sides to each of the circles at specific iterations, we can create a very smooth curve starting from the center all the way around. Now, these green arrows I'm placing are facing away from the center of each circle we will be making and pointing in the direction of the quarter circle of wire endpoints that we are going to be saving at each iteration. Now all you have to do is build your circles and then count out the appropriate radius and save a quarter of them in a semicircle and have them all line up with each other. This first one, a 16-sided circle in the A position, is going to fan from the top to the right and the points we are going to save are going to be one short floor away from the center point. Here we are at circle B and we're going to be again fanning out from a 32-sided circle this time, saving the points and connecting to the last point we saved at the previous semicircle. This is the trend we will be following for each of these. Here we are again at circle C, another 32-sided, starting from the very end of the previous one and counting out a radius of three this time. Next is circle D. We will be counting out a radius of five from the center point. Now this one, you can either do another 32-sided circle or you can go up to a 64-sided circle. I believe in this example in the tutorial, I only did a 32-sided, but if you want it to maintain a very fine curve and have the same distance between each point on the curve, I would suggest going to a 64-sided circle here. And once that's done, it'll bring you to the last circle, which is circle E. Again, you can continue the trend of 32-sided circles, but if you really want a fine curve, then continue with a 64-sided circle here. Anything past this, I would suggest going up to 128-sided circles just to maintain a smooth curve, but anything much larger than this, I'm not sure what you would do besides a uh, mural of some sort, a very large one. At any rate, uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Um, leave a comment. Let me know what you would like to see tutorials on in the future, and uh, yeah, I will see you next time.